Hello everyone, this is meant to be a Cutout 101 video where we explore the cutout style, what makes or breaks it, and what kind of configurations you can change to make the cutout style unique to you and your production. Let's get started. So the first thing to do is you can open the style presets and you will notice a bunch of cutout presets. This is the default one. And you also have other cutout presets here that are prefixed by a CO underscore. Once you load a cutout preset, you can define its configuration. So I'm gonna work with cutout blue. And once you click here on the conf node, you have all the different options for the cutout. Now, as you can see, the cutout is all about silhouette and negative spaces. So really the designs need to be thought out to work with cutout. In this case, we have this shark here and we have some nice gills. We have some nice here negative spaces that we could use to really communicate by only using negative spaces. And that's the key of cutout. I personally find this extremely fun to work with because this forces you to think in terms of silhouettes, in terms of communicating with very basic shapes. And that's why I find this style so intriguing. So let's get to the configuration of this style. The engine, general, and ambient occlusion don't really apply much for cutout. This is just to define some general MNPRX settings, general world scale. We don't really have atmosphere tint in cutout, so we can just ignore this. And ambient occlusion, we can also ignore this because we're just working with shapes, negative shapes and positive shapes. These shapes are showing either the main substrate or the alternate substrate. So as you can see here, the blue is the main substrate, which is the substrate that is in the front. And the alternate substrate is the one that is being shown once the front substrate is cut out. That's why the name of the style. And now these can very easily be inverted here. So once we click on invert, then the main substrate is going to be the blue one here. So instead of having it cut out to show what's underneath, we have a paper cut so cut in front of the background. So it's it's a nice thing to be able to switch between either cutout or paper cut animation. Then the next thing you will notice is distance. This defines the distance between the front paper and the back paper. The more you move with it, the more distant it will look like. And take into account that all of these attributes here, they really depend on the substrate light direction. So it depends on where you shine the light from you will have a different shadow, like the shadow is gonna drop from different directions. 180 is the top, zero is the bottom, 225 is the top right. I kinda like to have it from the top right, so I'll keep it at that. So distance define how far away these two substrates are from each other. Now substrate is a word for a surface where you put paint on. So we use this to generalize things across all styles, but you can also see this simply as paper. This is the main paper. This is the alternate paper. The drop shadow defines how much of the drop shadow you want to have, the intensity thereof. Then you have the drop shadow radius, which controls how blurred the drop shadow is. And yeah, this all depends on the distance between the main substrate, which is blue, and the alternate substrate. By the way, you can always change these colors to make it look however you want. So if I want some green here, I can have it. Let's put some orange for now. So yeah, this depends on the distance and the distance changes the way the shadow is dropped. And you can also control the radius of how much blur this uh, shadow has. Then we have something called the outer bevel shadow. And this is just when, when you're cutting paper, you usually don't have the paper be exactly straight because of your scissors, they kind of like have this little bend and you can control how much this is shown, as you can see here. The same thing with the highlight, since it's bent the other way around and the light shines from here, you can define a highlight here. And this auto bevel radius defines both for the highlight and for the shadow, how it should look like. Once again, remember that this is directly affected by the light direction and also by the light tilt. So depending on how the light is tilted, you will see the drop shadow also moving along with it, depending on the distance, right? So let's bring this back to 45, which is the default, and this one is 225. 
yeah, this brings us to the cut highlight. The cut highlight just defines this highlight here that you have on the exact place where the cutout was cut. So you can define how strong this is or how toned down you want it to have. Then you have the cut in the opposite direction, so in the direction facing the light. And here you can also define to have it very bright or not so very bright. And then the last one is control over the gra gradient shade. This one defines how much the light coming from that direction will affect the gradient that is lighting up the substrate. So depending on the color you might need to tweak this a little bit more or less. One thing that I also like to add for cutout is a little bit of distortion. Just make it a bit more handmade, you know. When you're cutting paper it's not gonna be perfectly straight and once you set up the quality to TAA you have a very nice cut pattern. And then of course you can control how much the main substrate blends with the structure of the alternate substrate so you can kind of morph these two papers together. Then the light direction, we already talked about that. Then we have the individual control over each substrate. So you can choose your own texture, you can change the color, you can rotate the texture to have a different pattern surrounding it. So you can really play a lot with this style and once you're happy with it just remember to create your preset here. This is gonna be cutout orange. Hit enter and then you have your cutout orange. That way you can very easily change between different cutout styles and play and explore with them as well. Remember the key for cutout is to have the design work as a silhouette and to play with negative spaces. I think it's an extremely fun style to work on. It's challenging, but the results look really cool. That's it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And if you wanna keep getting these tutorials and be notified by it, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. That's it, see you next week.